Don't all speak at once. Justin, I have some more here last year. I can't compare. Yeah, that goes down here to the left. And we're going to put the top of the over here. Look what there is right now. He's doing well, right? And when you take a lot of reps, you just that's when you become better. You can start slowing down things in front of you. Early on, we're fast, and you know what you're looking at. Uh, whereas now, the game's slowed down, so he's communicating better. Um, and then the guys around them are seeing it the same way. So um, all these guys, that's what we've challenged these guys the next two weeks at camp. But who do you want to be? You want to be a great player? You want to take the next step? And that's what we have to do. And that starts with fundamentals and skills and building those things. Um, so that that can match the talent level we have, because if he's a talented guy, it needs to play that. How good can he be? Elite, best, number one. Why do you say that? Let's just say his athleticism is how does that translate to a, how does that help you? How does that help a run game? Well, everything. I mean, if you're asking guys to do, I mean, whatever style of play you're doing, right? If he can handle a guy more in a single block than having to double team the inside all the time, it probably helps somatically. But that just depends on what we're doing, right? Um, the biggest thing with him, though, is like if he loves ball, it's really important to him. He wants to know why, and then he's got a little toughness to him. So the toughness, like that's that's also a skill set. Like you, you, you build that, and that's one of his high qualities too. So whether we're asking him to reach block, back block, hold, whatever those may be, if you have toughness with it, on top of wanting to do it and knowing what you're doing, then you're gonna play at a high level. For you being your first camp with, with this group, what are some of the priorities? What are some of the things you're looking for out of the, the whole alignment? Base Base spin, balance, and burst. That will never change. I'm not trying to cut the question off. But great offensive linemen play with great base and great bend. They're in balance. They're not on the ground. And they burst. They run off the ball. They pass set with urgency. They know what they're doing. They play really, really fast. And so as a coach, you can't. I can't say, oh, we're looking pretty good. We're veteran guys. Let's go on to something in right field. Because at the end of the day, I said this in the spring when I first got here. So it's going to sound like I'm beating a dead horse. But you know, it's, it's, you got to work those techniques and fundamentals and put those in the toolbox every day because you have to pull those out in the middle of the game because it's blocking and tackling. We block them, they don't sack CJ, they don't tackle the running backs, throws down the field. If we don't block them, they don't tackle us. And that's, that's as elementary as it gets. So we try to stay focused on that and every day what we're working, why are we working it, and how fast can we put it in the toolbox so that on September 3rd, when we need to pull that out, it's shiny and polished and ready to go. How are you seeing the depth come along right now? Are you seeing guys that you're feeling confident in? Yeah, I think, well, we just had a pads on for two days now. So this week, right, will be, it's the, you know, it's the grind. It's necessary to make the system work. And so you get through, so some of those young guys that developed in the summer, they got more comfortable in the summer, and suddenly put the pads back on, it starts flashing a bit. You gotta see those guys play. They've gotta feel the physicality, the friction. Um, so as we get through this week and the next couple of weeks, that's when you really start to try to maybe pencil guys in or shift some guys around. But right now, we got to go play ball. We've got to identify those younger guys that can creep their way up the depth chart. So, you know, Jen Mahalski, Josh Fryer, a couple of guys in those backup tackle spots. Just what do you see from both of them? Uh, right now, they're just working. They're buying in. I mean, that's just... But every guy, there's not a guy out there right now that's kind of showing up and, you know, we're talking about taking reps or using reps. Those guys are using their opportunities. They're using reps. Whether they win the rep or lose the rep, they're using those right now. Those guys, as you said, the young tackles, the, you know, Enix in there working his butt off. You got all the young, Jacob James is back and feeling good and fighting. So as you just work your way down the youth of that, these guys right now are just, they're all just working. And it'll, it'll shake out as it goes. Just like the look we saw as practice, you had all the two freshmen working with the tackles. Um, how much of that is, is the depth of the tackle position right now versus like the philosophy of what you want to do with the young guys? No, I think it's a little bit of both. The speed, of the, if, if a guy can potentially play out there, then you get the guy on the edge so that he feels the speed of the game out there. And then as you move in, you feel more of the physicality versus if you start everybody hunker down inside and then you try to work out. It's just a different animal out on the island. So I think it's a good teaching progression for those guys, if they can handle it. And those guys can, of learning the speed, learning the things out there, and then kind of reeling it back if you need to. You Is that like the message you get to recruits for? Uh, nah, I mean, no. You, you recruit a guy saying you're, you're going to work at this position. Those guys came in, I mean, uh, knowing what they were looked at to be. Um, but the, the good thing is you got to play the five best. Right? I mean, across the country, you see that. Where, you know, you would love to slot. This guy's a tackle. This guy's a guard. This guy's this. But if your backup right tackle is not number six, and you got to slide the right guard out to be right tackle, so your six best guy is the backup right guard, you have to play your five best. And so the more you can just see what guys can do, the more comfort they can have doing a couple of tasks. You can't spread them too thin. But at the same time, like I said, with those young guys, you start with speed, you start them in space, see how that handles, and then see where you can move them.
to you and Mike seem to be the most maybe hands-on or intense coaches on the practice field? I don't know if you agree with that assessment, but would that be a nature of the position you coach or your personality? Uh, well, it's not a competition. I mean, <laughs> obviously I'm way younger than Kevin Wilson, so I'll probably have a little more juice than Kev, right? You can tell me I said that too. No, I, but yeah, I, but uh, I played it. That's the way to coach. Man. They feel you. They, they got to feel your passion. You can't stand back there and just bark at a dude and cross your arms and look at your script. If you're in it with them, if you're passionate with them, if you're, they feel that, then they'll, they'll thrive off that. So I mean, that's not even really. That's just me. You know? And then I look for guys like that, and that's what Mike does. You know? There's four eyes and two mouths seeing the same thing, and that's the most important thing. It's not a different message. It's not, hey, you need to do this because I want this. That's who he is too. And I think the guys are, they like it. Not to compare or even compete, just what's been the feedback for the way you run a practice? I mean, I know you have good people in the spring, so they've had an acclimation with that, but how do they like what you guys bring in? They like to get better. They, meaning every player in the history of the game, these guys especially, they, they, they're craving coaching and teaching and getting better. So once again, I don't think they're looking for like a certain personality type, but if the player and the kid feels that you care about them, you're pushing them and you're trying to maximize them and you're making them better, then that's all that matters. And that's what every one of these guys is. There's no pushback. There's no, you know, they're all the different skill set or level, but at the end of the day, you just got to make your guys better. That's the most important thing. You know, that's Justin, Justin, those four Bs that you mentioned, is that a, is that new to your guys? Is that something, or are you just kind of re, is it new lingo for, you know, things that they may have been used to? Previous. I, mean, I think that's the game in itself. Yeah. Maybe the verbalization of that might be new, but I mean, I said, you know, you can bring my daughter and my wife out here and ask them, like, can you block a guy when your toes are together and you're standing straight, or would you rather have your legs wide? You know, Lauren Schreiber, like, well, you probably need a base. You know? So I think just the emphasis and the verbalization of that um, as an emphasis, and then when we go to drills, we're drilling this, and here's why. I got you, coach. Then if they can see it, you know, then they, they start putting that picture together. Justin, how has Paris continued to kind of get back to the space at that point compared to where he was last year outside? Yes. The, um, reps. Yeah. Busted his butt all summer. Getting comfortable in space. Like he's, I mean, all the stuff you said, he's just working. It comes with the speed and the space. And and then you got a guy like Zach Harrison and JJP and Jack and JT. And you got dudes across from you rushing you every day. You better get acclimated pretty quick. Um, and, and he's doing it. Did, when he kind of first made that switch back, did you did you see him having to have to get used to that again? And then I guess where yeah, he's at now. No, abso well, absolutely, because he just talked about what we talked about earlier. He was inside for 12, 14 games. Yeah. And then now you get moved on the island. It's flashing a little quick at her. But he, he, he guy's tough, too. He's a fighter. He wants to be great. I think everything, everything he does is because he just wants to be great. So looking at, looking at those guys. And then once again, like I'm new here. So like sometimes you're like, well, this guy's talking cliches. Like, no, it's just fact. He wants to be a really good player. He asks for the tools to be a good player. He takes those to the skill set and those tools to when it's live. And then they start working. And that's when you build confidence. And he's doing that right now. Justin, you've already been asked about it. Go ahead. I was just wondering about the, the decision to put Donovan and Paris together and Matt and Devon together. Is that more about comfortability with those guys? Is there something you like about how their skill sets sort of complement each other? I mean, I feel like our, our guards are explosive, powerful, tough guys, and our tackles can do the skill sets we needed to do. So it wasn't, there wasn't something really deep about how to be more simpatico left and him yeah. to the right of that. And it's, there was none of that, no. Kevin insinuated that maybe Donovan was getting that left guard time just because if you had to move him outside, that would be an easier adjustment. Yeah, that just goes to what I talked about. you got to play your five best, so that's what camp's for. Right? You get going, and like you said, we build the depth, and the two start showing up, and then this guy's this guy. Who's the next guy in the game, and how do you shuffle your you know, checker pieces to make sure that you're covered on the board? You know? So could that be a piece? Yeah, maybe if we needed to be. But I don't know that yet because... We haven't even been in we don't have, you know, full pads. Yeah, you know, we're just still working in the uppers. So that's what we're finding out this week. Justin, Ryan in the spring kind of called the unit out and wanted to see more depth. And I know you've already been asked about how the depth's coming along. But did you see guys like like Zen, like Jacob James, those guys who were borderline into too deep? Did you see them take that as a challenge this offseason? Yeah, we all did, right? myself included. Right? So yeah, the summertime was great. They came out. It worked when we weren't here. There was. You know, it's not extra work. It's where you do it till you know it. Right? A lot of people say, oh, we're going to get extra work in. Um, 
If you don't know it or you don't have it yet, it's really excellent. There's no time stamp on it. Um, and those guys work this summer and they are comfortable. Like we said, we just got to keep practicing. We got to go watch this tape, see the good today, the bad today, the ugly today, and trim the fat and keep working. But yeah, that, like I said, all, everyone included took that. We got to build that and then that's what we're going to do. And so we attack that and they attack that individually. We did as a unit and get through camp, see where we're at. How much has DeWan's body transformation changed what he's able to do on the field? I mean, it's gonna. If you could go in the weight room and walk around all day with like a 45 or 50 pound plate on your back, and the next day you took it off, you're gonna move a lot better. So, anytime a guy gets in great shape, it's gonna help. I mean, he's 60. I'm not saying that, but yeah, and same deal. Once they get a little taste and they see the success and they bear a little fruit and understanding of what's going on, that, that's huge for those guys. Right? And so, yeah, if I can move a little better, 10 pounds lighter, then I'm gonna do that. Right? I know you weren't here when he first got here, but there was all the talk about how much he loved basketball and, and whatnot. Does he look like a basketball player playing football, or is he fully football? He's a football player. Yeah, good feet, heavy hands, important to him. He's, he's fighting to be a better version of himself every day. The basketball stuff, though, I mean, you can use that with these guys still talking, right? Especially as Indiana guys, right? With DeWan and Josh and myself. And we, we tell Zinn he's from Kentucky because he's right on the <laughs> river. But those Hooper guys, you know, you know drop step and do something. It's like you're cutting a guy off at the baseline. You remember when you did that in you know, Beach Grove? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's maybe more of a teachable thing. But he's a, I guess a football player. He can play hoops, right? And we, we, we could probably put together a pretty good, like, five-on-five five squad. But he's a ball player. How about Paris, just from, like, a, a mental perspective? What most impresses you about his preparation and his film study? He pushes it right to the peak. He just he wants to be great. He wants to have all the information. He wants to gather it all. His biggest thing that he's learning right now, he's doing an unbelievable job. He's like, I don't need to like look for everything. Just work my way to the right answer through the tools, the technique, the, whatever the front may be. So I'm not looking for everything. I see exactly what it is because he wants to know everything learning the way to get there as opposed to being <laughs> omniscient, right? Um, that's offensive line playing and stuff, too. I was asking Coach Day about this. Uh, there's a world-famous uh, situation that happened here in 2014 at the uh, Buckeyes winning the Virginia Tech game. And Virginia Tech jumped into a bear defense, and the Buckeyes offensive group had not prepared for that and not seen that, et cetera. And I'm just wondering, in preseason camp, in spring preseason, how much do you want to expose them to sort of the – the different fronts that a team can surprise you with, uh, theoretically. Yeah, that's part of it. you got to build the, the toolbox. And so, you know, try to simplify as much as you can for the guys of what's the front family? Is it a four down front? Is it a bear front? Is it three down? And then the exposure to that. But it's the same deal. You can't paralyze a guy going up saying, oh, is this the one where it's, yeah. no, it's, hey, there's berm. It's four down. This is what we're doing. Yeah. None. There's, oh, this is Bear, here's our skill set, here's our calls, this is what we're doing. So you have to build that. It can't be the first time you see it is when you see it, but you're not going to overwhelm those guys or water it down to, you know, have them serve in that way, too. How much time do you spend on that every every day or every practice or every, I mean, or I guess oh. Justin is kind of what y'all do for a living, really. You're in, yeah, you're in an installation phase, so you're trying to touch on the base stuff and then build from there. There's not necessarily a checklist per se, but you need to make sure in certain protections you touch those with the quarterbacks. In certain run schemes, you touch that with the tight ends if they're involved. If the running backs need to see something. So you try to just go through your installation phase and, and build build your glossary. And then week by week, what's good versus this? Here's what we ran this week. And then you just kind of work that way. When you, got here, when you got here in the winter, you talked about you wanted your offensive line to have kind of a presence or another team to feel you, I guess. You're having, feel you with the word like it would like be like a something short and everybody knew that you were going to run and you wanted to be able to kind of be good in those situations. How do, how do you kind of coach that over an offseason spring camp? You can start showing them like through this, like you talk about it. 